Hi everyone, thank you for joining my session on the Omnichannel Engagement Hub that I'm giving today for Dynamics Con. So just a bit about me. My name is Trisha Sinclair and I'm a D365 pre-sale solution architect from DXC Technology. As I mentioned, this session is all about the Omnichannel Engagement Hub. And in this session, I'm gonna go through a brief introduction to what the Omnichannel Engagement Hub is before going through three channels, the chat channel, the SMS channel, and the voice channel. And then we'll delve into the supervisor features. So let's get started by going into the Omnichannel Engagement Hub. And first of all, talk about what exactly it is. Now, here's me. This is a young me at 18 years old. And the reason I have this picture up is because I actually started my career in a call center. So Basically, I worked at a call center, and when I worked at this call center, um, it was based in the outskirts of, of Derbyshire in the middle of nowhere. Now, because of that, we had to factor in, um, first of all, could I actually attend that call center? If you couldn't travel, you weren't able to work there. Um, basically, this means that employers, if, you're, if you have a call center, you're missing out on really, really good talent because you're not able to be flexible with the the people that can actually travel. Secondly, whilst working at the call center, I had to experience the the difficulties or the the challenges of working at, at a call center, namely the amount of different systems that you'd have to use just to, in order to answer um, a query that a customer would have. So for example, if you're actually calling about just a balance transfer, you might actually have one system to check your balance, another system to actually execute the balance transfer. And of course, another system where you're analyzing and understanding the history of what you know you called about before um, and another system to log the phone call. That's a lot of systems that you'd have to learn about, a lot of systems that you'd need to put information into. Um, and of course, you're actually targeted on KPIs or key performance indexes. So with all of this, it's challenging to work at a call center, not only um, because of the systems, but of course the location. And the eighth on the customer side, um, imagine you know having to call up all the time to understand to to try and uh, you know not repeat yourself. That's that's a challenge a lot of people have um, when they're calling a call center. They have to continuously repeat themselves, and that is a challenge that a lot of companies are trying to face. So this is actually what Omnichannel is aiming to address. Omnichannel is a a solution that Microsoft have provided that will enable a multi-session, multi-tabbed, um, cloud-based call center solution and removing the, the drawback of having to be on-premise just to um, be a call center agent. So now you're able to have a remote call centers. Um, and on top of that, you're able to have multiple systems in one, um, multiple systems held in one, you know, system so it basically is easier to navigate and it removes the the need for extended training for all these different systems so just to go into a little bit of more detail the omni channel engagement hub is actually based on what's known as d365 customer service so d365 customer service is a first party model driven app um, and it is a part of the power platform um, this actually provides standard you know, case management features such as knowledge articles, surveys, which your standard business process flows, which I like to refer to as, you know, a virtual um, business process that you can actually see on screen. It basically ensures that everything is transparent. You can actually see where you are in a particular process. Not only that, but we can actually, we've actually built on top of the standard routing that's available inside of Dynamics. And therefore, we have omnichannel routing, which allows us to navigate different conversations based on the skill that's required to answer those customer calls. Um, so, as standard, we have different channels. So, it doesn't really matter where the conversation comes from. Um, we're able to um, take those conversations, root it based upon those skills or the um, or particular information provided by the customer, and provide a unique and seamless agent experience utilizing standard Dynamics customer service functionality. 
So some of the channels that we might actually think about are your voice channel, your Facebook, your SMS, um, your, your voice, um, or even WhatsApp. And as I mentioned, today we're going to be showing you three of those channels, namely chat, um, SMS, and then we're going to be showing you the voice channel. So you might actually be asking, what about the Unified Service Desk? Well, Unified Service Desk is, um, is also a multi-session, multi-tabbed experience. Um, this, however, is a desktop application. So like I mentioned before, when working at that call center, it was all um, on-premise applications, things that were installed in machines, which meant that you had to be on site in order to um, do your job. And if you weren't able to make it to site, then you weren't able to work. That's pretty much the same experience that you have with the Unified Service Desk. It has to be installed on um, on, on, on the laptop or on a machine. Um, so, and on top of that, it does require it a highly complex um, setup. So, it, you do have to have some form of experience to configure and set that up. Um, now. The omnichannel for um, omnichannel engagement hub, on the other hand, is I, I like to refer to this as USD Lite simply because although it offers very similar experience to USD or Unified Service Desk, it um, doesn't require the same level of um, knowledge, uh, and it does it's not as complex to set up as USD. It is extremely configurable just in the um, the user front end. OK, and on top of that, USD, another difference is USD or Unified Service Desk. Um, you can have on-premise applications um, embedded within that system as well, whereas Omnichannel being based in the cloud can only have all other cloud based applications, um, you know, as a part of it or embedded there. So those, that's the actual key differences between the two. Um, they are not going to replace each other. Um, they they complement each other in, in, in different ways, okay? Because on, on the USD, another difference, actually, it does not have the capability to have standard channels. Omnichannel, however, does have standard channels like chats or WhatsApp, etc. So you can actually embed Omnichannel inside of USD to extend the functionality that's actually available inside of that product as standard. So let's go into the first demonstration and that's gonna be the chat channel. So in this demonstration, what I'm going to talk you through is the experience of um, a customer going onto a web portal. Now, you don't need to have Dynamics portals or Power Apps portal in order to leverage or use um, Omnichannel Engagement Hub. In fact, this can actually be embedded on any portal. It's a snippet of code. You pop it in and you get this, this button here. You can also use your own buttons and also dynamically um, initiate a chat. Before I initiated the chat, what I actually did was I clicked around to try to resolve my issue in a typical way that a customer would do. You know, a lot of customers, they actually like to proactively try to resolve their issues themselves. And if they're not able to, then they'll actually reach out to you. So let's go and... Um, initiate a conversation. So as you can see here, um, we have the the a pre-chat questionnaire. Now this pre-chat questionnaire is basically prompting us for information to enable um, the chat conversation to, to route it through to um, an appropriate queue or team. It's also allowing an agent to know why we're contacting them. And this is really useful if you don't have a bot. Now, I live in Europe, so for GDPR purposes, you can also have you know, mandatory fields. For example, here, I've got a mandatory field to ensure that we're keeping a copy of the conversation. And for those who might also not live in Europe, um, when you move to a new location, you need to um, contact your local council to let them know so you can actually set up what's known as council tax. So in this scenario, we're gonna be initiating a conversation in order to set up our council tax. So the first thing um, that I'm going to do is I'm going to be interacting with a Power Virtual agent. So as I mentioned before, we had um, 
attempted to deflect away from this chat using knowledge articles, or second deflection is going to be with Power Virtual Agent. Um, so Power Virtual Agent is going to attempt to deflect away a lot of that conversation, enabling an agent to deal with more complex cases. So the bot is now going to deflect to the agent. Um, so let's see what that's actually going to look like from an agent standpoint. So from an agent standpoint here, you can actually see that I've got a chat request coming in. Now the chat reason is council tax inquiry. And that is because as you saw, I actually chose chat reason as, um, for, as the reason for me contacting the, um, contacting the council. Um, you can see it here, the wait time is actually counting down. And um, once the wait time has counted down, what's gonna happen is two things. The agent status is going to be reset to a way to prevent them from getting any new conversations. And they'll also get a notification to advise them that they missed a conversation. So this is just to enable us to um, service customers better and not have them waiting for too long for someone who's actually just not there. Um, I did mention that the chat reason is um, coming from the pre-chat questionnaire. But on top of that, you can also have the chat reason coming from um, your Power Virtual agent because this is all contextual information that the agent or the, the agent is now gonna have um, handy to them. So here you can actually see that um, the Omnichannel has identified the, the customer um, based upon the name. Now, because the name um, is the same, it's going to identify me, but I can also search for customers um, and validate that they are this, they are who they say they are before going into um, servicing the issues that they might have. On top of that, I'm not coming in as an agent blind. Um, I can actually see the conversation that the bot and the customer had um, and actually pick up the conversation. And I also have um, information that's been provided about the customer, namely the cases that um, they've had open with us or closed or recent cases. Um, I can actually see the pre-chat survey information that they populated, the queue that they've come into, because as I mentioned, based upon the pre-chat questionnaire, I can route the conversation through to a different queue. Now, I mentioned before as well that it could be based and assigned to a specific agent based on skill as well. So if I'm coming in and I spoke um, Spanish and the language um, against the portal or the language that I'm populate, I'm using is in Spanish, then it could identify someone with a skill of um, you know, speaking Spanish and it will route it through to that agent. So it basically keeps everything really nice and efficient. Um, and also this really helps with um, customer service satisfaction. Now, I have three tabs here, um, namely pre-chat survey, which we talked about. The visitor tab really shows the location as to where I am. Don't worry, this is not my strict location, but it's very close. Um, but it also shows the, um, the browser that I'm using, especially if you're going to be troubleshooting anything on someone's device. Um, now I mentioned that I had clicked around the, um, the, the portal in order to self-service. Now, if you need to see the pages that um, your customer was visiting so you can actually help them better, then you also have what's known as a self-service, which is portal navigation. Now with portal navigation, with a snippet of code, you can actually um, pop it into any portal, again, and not necessarily Dynamics portal, but what it does, it sends this across with the um, escalation to let the, the to make the agent aware of where on the portal, where on the website that customer has actually visited. Now, on the right, you'll have what's known as agent guidance. Now, we all know, you know, agent call scripts, agent call scripts kind of guides an agent through to what to say. It keeps them seamless. It keeps everyone on the same wavelength, saying the same things. Um, and I like to call it agent guidance as opposed to an agent script because you don't want to sound scripted when you're actually dealing with a customer. So, for example, in my welcome and introduction, it says use quick reply to, to say hello. And that's a good reminder that I need to show one you how to use quick reply. Now, quick reply, I like to call it canned responses. It's a templated response that um, enables agents to have a long, like a large 
number of texts or a large grouping of text um, by using just code. So if I just put hash Q, for example, indicating that I want to use quick reply and I populate what I want to say, then it will search through a subset of quick reply um, templates and allow me to choose the one I want and pop it in. Now, it will also use um, what's known as um, slugs. Now, what a slug is, is um, a a parameter that's set at the time of use. So it it knows my name is Alex, but it wouldn't have known my name is Alex at the time of creating that quick reply template. Um, you can also create quick reply templates that set by the system administrator. And in the latest release of Omnichannel that's due to come out in October, you'll also be able to set personal quick reply templates as well. Now that I've actually finished that step, I can mark that as complete. This is really useful for those who need to know what was actually done on a call um, so you can actually check things off as you go. The next thing that I need to do, of course, is validate or verify that the customer is who they say they are. Now, another example of slug. So here you can actually see that a slug has actually dynamically transformed itself to data that's associated to the contact record. So this is actually the date of birth as coming from Trisha Sinclair's record. So really useful for, for validation without having to go to the contact record or the account record. It can pull information in from other areas of CDS. So here I'm actually going to validate the customer's address and then I'm going to go back to the welcome screen. So you can actually see how easy it is to navigate um, when you're setting up um, the agent guidance. Another really useful thing is um, you can see the council tax inquiry. Now, Agent scripts can be defaulted based on um, a variety of things. It uses a conditional script. So my condition was if the topic was council tax, then I want it to default to the council tax inquiry um, agent script. So for each team, for each reason, you might reach each team or each reason for contact, you might actually want to say something different, deal with that call different. And with agent guidance, you're going to be able to do that. Um, now, agent scripts enable, use, enable us to use what's known as macros. Now, with macros, what we can actually do is um, automate standard things that a customer or an agent would have to do. So, for example, if I wanted to create a case, there are three ways of doing it. I can create a case here, or I can actually go to the contact record and create a case. Or if, even if I wanted to create an order, I'd have to go to the contact and then create that order. Alternatively, you could leverage what's known as a macro where at the click of a button, it can take all the information that it knows about this conversation and pre-populate it um, to reduce the number, reduce the effort that the agent would have to do so they can focus on the conversation at hand. So as you can see with the click of a button, I've been able to create a case um, with the case title populated as to the reason for contact, the customer populated, the origin, and the description is populated with the information um, that's taken from the Power Virtual Agent bot. Okay, and of course, as you can see, um, it is leveraging standard D365 customer service functionality. Um, so for example, the business process flow that I mentioned earlier, which is a, um, a digital representation of your internal business process. Um, and also it has your standard um, SLAs, etc. So all of this, it leverages. So I'm going to continue to have a discussion with the agent. So I'm gonna say, um, I want to set up an appointment with someone to speak about my taxes, but I haven't been able Okay, so I have said a, a few things there. Now, the reason I've said that is because what I'm trying to do is I wanna show how we can leverage what's known as Smart Assist. Now, what Smart Assist does is, imagine if you're in a call center like I was, um, 
what I would tend to do is I would put myself on hold. I would have to interact with someone else to ask a question, to get guidance. So for example, a new trainee or someone who just needed a, a bit of extra support, um, they're able to, you know, instead of um, interrupting someone, they can leverage what's known as a smart assist. Smart assist is listening to that conversation. It's listening to the text that you're using. And then it's going to reach out to the different areas, internal to dynamics, external to dynamics, and populate um, the information here that it will suggest um, based on the configuration of the system administrator. And so what this is, is that it's an adaptive card that I can actually use to now automate this, the creation of this appointment because it has identified that I've asked to set up an appointment. So, well, the next step is, okay, let me create an appointment for you. So again, with a click of a button, I can actually create an appointment. So as you can see, it's really cutting down the amount of effort that an agent would actually have to do. Okay, so I have... Okay, so another thing as well that I want to show is, um, so sentiment analysis. So sentiment analysis, you do have to actually get into the flow of a conversation for this to actually show up. But here, what you actually have is sentiment analysis that show either positive or negative. Um, and if it does show negative or it's trending negative, what this will then do is this would um, send an alert to a supervisor to let them know that a um, they might actually need a conversation is in need of attention because um, someone is not happy. So it's more a proactive, um, proactive supporting of your agent. Instead of waiting until things get really bad, you proactively attempt to support them by coaching them behind the scenes and then jumping in if you feel that, that um, feel that there's that need. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to end this conversation because what I want to show is what this will actually look like. Um, to the agent, sorry, to the customer once that conversation has ended. So once the conversation has ended, what will then happen is um, they can be prompted to complete a post chat survey. Now this post chat survey leverages what's known as customer voice. Um, so here we're actually leveraging different parts of the Power Platform in order to um, ensure that we have a seamless customer journey. Um, and here, if we populate everything, then the customer voice survey response is then associated directly to that conversation, enabling you to to um, do any reporting to validate um, your customer satisfaction levels. So let's go back and actually just reconfirm some of the tips and gotchas. So what I showed um, when I when I initiated the chat was a notification template showing us what we what the what the chat was coming in about and why um, why the customer wanted to speak with us. Um, now I did show a reactive chat, but it is also possible to have a proactive chat where if someone is on a particular page for a long time and you wanted to proactively reach out to them, that could actually happen as well, and they would actually go through the same process same journey that we actually went through for reactive chats. Now, we also showed um, the, the ending of a chat, but when we have the ending of a chat, um, the agent or the customer is also able to download transcripts and save them themselves. The customer, sorry, the agent is also able to see that transcript. If there's any um, masked data, though that masked data is not saved to the transcript. Um, the chat button can be designed within reason. Um, if there is any extend, extended you know, design that um, is needed, the, the suggestion is to create your own chat button and then dynamically initiate a chat conversation using code. That information is available on Microsoft Docs. Now, I did show Smart Assist, and Smart Assist can be extended in a wide variety of ways, and it has so many uses. So in, in for sales, for example, it could be your next best action. Um, it could also be um, different offers. It could leverage information from customer insights. There's a variety of things that you can actually do with Smart Assist, which makes it so, such a powerful option inside of Omnichannel.
And then also for the application templates, we showed how we could actually bring up different tabs based upon the different um, buttons that we were clicking inside of agent guidance. Now these application templates um, go across the different um, channels. So you could have one different um, set for your chat channel and a different set for SMS and voice. Now, although I'm going to show you um, the SMS journey, it's pretty much going to be the same journey, but we're going to show just to show how it can actually be a pretty much seamless, irrespective of which channel you're coming through. So it reduces on training time. And the reason I have this slide here, which is a comparison slide between um, the Live Assist products for those who might actually currently be using Live Assist and thinking of coming over to Omnichannel, this slide shows what the differences are between the two. Right now, they are actually all the same. It, it has the same features between the two, albeit they might actually be tackled differently. They both have the ability to transfer. They both have canned responses, surveys. Um, they both have chatbot integration and they both have routing. So they both have pretty much the exact same features now. Let's go in um, to the SMS channel demonstration. Now for this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just link my phone to the screen. So give me one second whilst I do that. Okay, so now that we're actually inside uh, my chat, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna initiate a conversation. Now with SMS, um, the customer has to initiate a conversation. Um, we're not currently able to um, initiate outbound conversations. Um, just like um, with the chat conversation, what's gonna happen is we're gonna go directly to Power Virtual Agent, which is gonna attempt to deflect the conversation. So I'm gonna say I need to um, set up council text. So again, like before, what this is going to do is it's going to take me to the council tax topic inside of Power Virtual Agent. And, um, and then it's going to route me through to a, um, an agent. Unlike before, though, um, what's not going to happen is obviously I haven't had pre-chat questionnaires. So there are key differences between the channels. So here you can actually see that I now have an SMS request coming in. Now, as, again, as you can see, it's actually found me as a customer. Now, how has it found me as a customer? Well, it's found me as a customer because my telephone number is actually linked to my customer profile. Um, as you can see here, though, the Power Virtual Agent information still comes through. I still have the agent guidance um, available to me, and I can still leverage um, the, the same scripts that I had before. So as I show you through this journey, you'll actually notice that the same functionality that's available in the chat channel is actually the same functionality that I will have available to me on the other channels as well. Um, I'll show you some key differences though with the voice channel, but effectively um, the Smart Assist will still be here. So I can initiate a, a Smart Assist by saying I will create an for you. You can see here that I can still initiate the Smart Assist um, and I still have the necessary conversation details. Okay, um, so the, the next thing that I wanna actually show is how we can take it further. So we can still, we can refer to knowledge articles. You can refer to knowledge articles. You can actually transfer um, the conversation to a different agent or a different queue. Um, and you can also, if you were a supervisor, monitor conversations as well, which I will show you later. Now, against this, you can actually have different um, tabs that you can actually refer to. So if you are, um, if you needed to refer to an external knowledge base, that could actually be an, ex an external tab. So just to really just recover what we actually just went through for um, the SMS channel, SMS is currently available with two different um, providers, namely Telesign and Twilio. These two channels are currently um, the only Microsoft supported channels. Um, however, um, you can also create what's known as custom channels if you wanted to take any external channels um, 
or external SMS providers into Omnichannel. So it is still possible, but these are the two that will enable you to use what's known as this SMS channel. Now, let's also look at the voice channel. So as I mentioned before, there isn't actually much that's different between them. The SMS channel, of course, we weren't able to leverage um, pre-chat surveys or post-chat surveys. Um, same with voice. We're not going to be able to leverage pre-chat surveys or post-chat surveys or, you know, the portal navigation. Now, with the voice channel, um, if you wanted to initiate it, it has to be a channel integration framework version 2 compatible. Um, the you can actually build your own custom built soft phone and there is a lot of information out there that will enable you to do that um, there are also isvs that do provide this service as well so you have like for example solgari or ingenious they actually offer the capability to integrate um, a soft phone integration into dynamics or not soft phone but their integration into dynamics that would provide that voice capability um, on top of that um, what we what you can do is of course you can record your voice calls and leverage what's known as conversation intelligence or call intelligence that's also included inside customer service insights let's have a look at our final demonstration where we delve into the supervisor features if we actually go in and log in to um, Omnichannel as a supervisor, um, what you'll see is we have what's known as the ongoing conversations dashboard. Now this ongoing conversations dashboard really enables us to see who is um, like, who's actually in a conversation, um, which customers are they in conversations with, through which channel, et cetera. The voice channel does not currently appear in this list. OK, um, and the reason for that is because it also shows the sentiment as well. So it it doesn't actually appear in this list. If I wanted to, I could actually monitor a conversation or I could um, if it wasn't a sign. So, for example, if a customer had um, was still in a queue and was unassigned, I could manually assign it to an agent by um, selecting it and selecting a sign. Um, if I did monitor a conversation, what would happen is as a supervisor, I would be able to kind of see the, the conversations without joining the actual conversation. Now, if I did join the conversation, what would then happen is I could um, interact with the I could interact with the agents in a in a private mode before going in and actually joining the conversation in a public mode. So I could actually coach the agent behind the scenes before actually joining in to the conversation if I needed to. The internal messages are not included in the public version of the transcript. So you'd be happy to know. Okay, so let's um, just finish up with the supervisor features. Um, another part of the supervisor features is the dashboard supervisor will actually have access to. So as a supervisor, I will be able to leverage um, what's known as the insights dashboard and the sentiment analysis dashboard. These two dashboards come as standard within Omnichannel Engagement Hub. Um, they basically allow us to see um, the the history of the conversations and actually see um, how well we're actually doing, how many conversations we're we are, we actually engaging in, and what's our wait time and typical KPIs that a call center would actually have. We also have um, the sentiment analysis dashboard, which basically allows us to see how happy our customers are since, um, in terms of customer satisfaction. So it's actually detecting the sentiment um, of the conversations behind the scenes for us. Okay. Okay, so just to recap, what we want, what we've walked through is the different omnichannel channels that we have um, available to us. Um, we we leverage the pre-chat functionality. Um, we initiated um, a Power Virtual Agent bot to attempt to deflect the conversation. We were then able to show the different customizations that were available. Um, like for example, being able to tweak or change the look and feel of the, the chat button or even um, the self-service functionality that was um, demonstrated. We were able to leverage quick reply and um, agent scripting or agent guidance. Um, and also we talked about sentiment analysis, which really helps to kind of enable our, our managers or our supervisors to 
pretty much proactively coach on um, the agents as as necessary um, and stop um, a converse, um, stop a conversation from derailing even more than it might already be doing. Um, we also demonstrate a smart assist, which kind of helps coach um, and guide agents as they're um, interacting with customers and also the supervisor dashboard. And we talked about different reporting capabilities. Thank you so much, Dynamics Con, for providing me the opportunity to present today. Now, if you've got any questions, please join me in the conference chat.